What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and in today's video, we've got a pretty highly anticipated look recreation. Today we are recreating the look of Loki, which has been one of my favorite series put out by Disney and Marvel. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. I won't be giving away any spoilers, but I do wanna mention a couple of things before we get started. First off, this is not gonna be a one-to-one -one match. We're not gonna go so deep into secondaries that it wouldn't work on any other shots. My goal here is to recreate the look as best we can while using as many primaries as we can so that the look more easily translates to different shots, different scenes, different cameras and so on and one more thing I want to note is that we're going to be grading this project mostly in aces today so if you're not familiar with aces I highly recommend checking out the link down below we just put out a new free training so you can go from not knowing anything about aces to grading your first project from start to finish all inside of aces so guys you know the drill if you're enjoying the content be sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials be sure to follow us on Instagram and with that let's roll the intro All right, let's jump right into this. Super excited to be bringing you a Loki look recreation tutorial. And I do wanna stress that this isn't gonna be a tutorial that's specifically trying to one-to-one -to -one match this exact look. Uh, what I'm more concerned with today's video being about is how to take inspiration from a reference like this one and recreating a look that's gonna be very, very similar, maybe not one-to-one, -one, but very similar, overall mood, colors, you know, all the tonality, they're the same. Um, but it is important that you, if you're recreating a look like Loki, you need to shoot something like Loki. You need to have similar colors in the palette, in the frame. You need to have similar lighting. Um, you know, the lighting here is one of the most important parts of creating this look. Uh, we've got incredible color cast back here with these two-toned lightings. We have some daylight balance lighting back here, complemented by this warmer glow, and then he's being lit by a daylight balance light, uh, which again gives us this complementary tones. The wardrobe he has on, uh, this orange right here, pay close attention to this orange because that's what we're going to be recreating our look with. It's almost this, this bright but still dull kind of orange. It's muted, it's almost pastel-y. Um, so we're gonna reference that. And then of course these blue tones that are just kind of sitting back here. Uh, and the color of the wall and the wood here, it's actually a, a banner. But overall, we're gonna try and, and bring these colors back into uh, our shot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the color palette here. I'm also gonna jump into our waveform. And this is gonna show us obviously the, the tonality of the image here. Our shadows are mostly kind of consisting of this warm brown look, uh, but the darker we get, we kind of have these, these hints of almost a blue cast here in the deep shadows. The midtones, we have these complementary green teals with these burnt oranges, and they're all very low in saturation. And then up in the highlights, it's mostly these neutral cool tones complemented by, again, these lights here. Pay attention to these two areas. That's where these, these highlights are coming from. Uh, just mostly this really amber-ish look. Um, that's kind of overall and then of course he's being lit by a pretty daylight balanced light so we're going to keep all these notes in mind as we rebuild our look uh, because it's not just about matching the colors that you see on screen it's also about understanding the psychology of the color palette uh, it's about understanding the the way it was lit the color science behind it and so knowing that there's there's tungsten lighting and there's daylight balance there's, we have this contrast this push and pull here the wardrobe all these elements that go into making this frame what it is um, that mentality understanding what makes this frame that's what we need to carry into our look recreation that's going to help us get a better end result that's going to apply more easily to several shots in a whole scene on a whole project whereas if you're just trying to match you know the density of his hair and the specific tone of his of his forehead where that key light's hitting him um, you're going to end up probably breaking your image and going too deep into secondaries to create a really useful look it's not really going to be usable on a, on a project level so we want to avoid that as best as we can and just kind of carry the feel the emotion of this frame uh, into our look recreation so on that note let's go ahead and take a look at our clip and this is it's pretty far off uh, from the start it's just a man uh, sitting in a prison which is kind of a similar layout from the scene from loki uh, he's been arrested and hopefully you know you're not watching this if you haven't seen it. I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but you should go ahead and watch it uh, just because that context matters. But this is our, our scene here. You know, he's kind of talking to his daughter. We kind of push in and go up close, all pretty handheld. Uh, so we're not gonna be doing anything that's gonna require specific tracking or intense keying. We wanna keep it pretty global. So let's go ahead and pick our hero frame. And I think, let's see, actually we're gonna zoom out a little bit because we need more frame. So as we notice, one thing I was mentioning is that we do not have that two-tone lighting. We don't have daylight and tungsten lighting. So keep that in mind. We're not going to be getting a one-to-one -one match without one-to-one -one lighting and one-to-one -one everything. So let's go ahead and build our node tree. Um, it's going to be a little bit dense, but 
every single node is going to have a purpose. Uh, and actually, before we build the node tree, let me go ahead and show you our color management settings here. Now, the scaling here is a little bit off just because it makes it easier for everyone to see what we're working on. Um, so this menu is usually not this large, but in this case, we're just going to roll with it. So our color space, our color science is DaVinci YRGB, and our timeline color space is ACES CZT. So we're going to be working in an ACES space. Uh, we can go ahead and check, make broadcast safe as well. So since we're working in an ACES color space, uh, we're going to have to do an ACES input transform. We're not going to be doing it at the project level. We want that full control here in the clip level. That's just how I like to do it. Um, there, you can certainly do it in other ways, but that's just my preference. So let's go ahead and get started building this node tree. And like I said, it may, be, it may seem a little bit congested, um, but I promise you everything we're going to be doing here, every node serves a purpose. So this first node here is going to be our highlight compression. And that's just because, I mean, if you look at our still, again, I want to pull this back up. Uh, everything is really sitting very low. So we want to compress our highlights. And I'm actually going to show you a pretty neat way to compress your highlights in a way that looks natural. We maintain a pretty natural roll off still. And it, granted, in this shot, we don't have any kind of crazy highlights. We have this one light over here. Um, but we're just going to bring that down, bring the high end down uh, without making everything look super flat and washed out. Uh, so that's our first node. And then next up is going to be an ACES input transform. So we're gonna call this one ACES in. And then we're gonna have a balancing node, which is, I mean, the shot's already balanced. We're actually almost using this as, a, as more of a primaries node. Um, so actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it that. Primaries here, and this is gonna be where we start to build our look. Next up, we're gonna add one more serial node, Alt S, and then we're gonna go Alt P. We're gonna add a few nodes here. The first one is going to be our look node. We're going to have curves. Actually, not so much curves. This is going to be more focused on our oranges um, because we have a very muted orange in our reference. And so we're going to recreate that here by bringing down the luminance of our oranges. Next up, we're going to have a window followed by another window. Now, after our parallel mixer, we're going to have some look adjustments. Then we're going to have our aces output device transform, taking our ACES color space and then converting it to rec 7 or 9. So after this node, everything's going to be in that rec 7 or 9 space. So we're going to have one node, two node, three nodes. And these are going to be for a couple of different things. First one's going to be a glow node, which, you know, I always have to have a glow node here. And then we're going to have a global adjustments node. And then lastly, uh, a little bit of grain because you can't go wrong with a little bit of grain. So we'll leave that there. So this is our node tree. Um, we're gonna add a little bit later on just whenever we're doing some work with our oranges because we don't wanna affect our skin tone. So I'm gonna show you another really cool way uh, to pull a very clean key for skin. So first up, we're gonna go ahead and set our ACEs input and output device transforms. So we're gonna drag an ACEs transform from the resolve OFX tab into the ACEs in node. And it's gonna be ACEs 1.1, that's the latest version. Input transform, this is shot on our Alexa. So we're gonna set that to Alexa. And the output is gonna be ACEs CCT, which is my preferred uh, ACEs variant. And yeah, the pun was intended again, sorry. And then again, we're gonna take our ACEs transform and drag it onto the ACEs out uh, node. And this again, ACEs 1.1, and then the input is going to be ACES CCT because that's what we're converting all this to. And then the output is going to be REC 709. And so now you notice that our scene is in a proper REC 709 uh, space. So this has kind of handled all of our contrast, saturation, and everything. Um, so that's, again, part of the beauty of ACES. Now, this does not look anything like our reference, which, again, is here. <laughs> we got a long way to go. But we're going to walk you through it step by step, uh, starting with the highlights compression. So... The trick here is going to make sure that you have your editable splines checked on. And then we're going to grab this white point here and pull this down quite a bit. And then we're going to take this spline here and just raise it up. And we want to try and get as natural of a roll off as possible. And right around there is going to be good. We'll probably bring it down even more, but we're not going to be finishing our exposure adjustments here in this first node. So right now, let's disable this one. I think that's going to do for now. We're definitely compressing the entire image into a smaller tonal range. So that's looking pretty good. Now in our primaries, uh, like I said, the image is fairly balanced. Um, I think if you were trying to you know, color correct, you could pretty much leave it here. Uh, we have a pretty good mix. And if you look at our uh, parade, it's pretty balanced. If you look at the vector scope, not the waveform, if you look at the vector scope, it's pretty balanced. That's kind of right where we want things. So that's why this isn't necessarily a color correction node. Although if we did need a color correction node, that would probably go right before this primaries node or just before the ACEs input uh, node. 
So in our primaries, what we're gonna to start to do here is start to push uh, some more of that warm and, and greenish tones into this palette overall. By using our HDR wheels, uh, this whole tab here, this, all these controls are color space aware. So they know that we're working in an ACES CCT color space uh, because right now our color space is set to use timeline, same as our gamma and our timeline color space is ACES CCT. So this is gonna match up perfectly and the math is gonna correlate beautifully. So now is actually gonna be a pretty good time to pull up our reference in a side-by-side. -side. And let's see, I'm gonna move this over. We don't need to see all these nodes right now. We really just need to see our primaries node, uh, the node we were selected on really. So let's go ahead and start warming this image up. Let's just take our temperature slider in the HDR wheels. I'm just gonna raise this up quite a bit. It's looking pretty good. And then we'll take our tint slider I'm just gonna pull this a little bit more towards green. Not too far, just right around there. So let's see what we did there. Not too bad, already starting off on a really good note. Um, so now we're gonna go into our look node and here we're gonna start pushing some colors and adjusting our contrast overall. Uh, we may actually jump back into our highlights compression node as well. And again, this is that node tree. I'm gonna be compressing the node tree a little bit as well. Uh, let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more in here. It's a little more crayon, but it gives us a little bit more room to see everything else. Now in our look node, let's go ahead and take our uh, primaries wheels. We're gonna hop into the gain here and just start to pull this down a touch. Same with our gamma. I'm gonna pull this down. And for our lift, didn't need us. We don't need much of a change, just bring it down a touch. Now let's go ahead and see what we're doing here with the exposure. It's getting us a lot closer already. And you can see our waveform is really confirming that, that we're starting to compress this image enough to where they match uh, for the most part in terms of tonality. So now let's go ahead and start pushing some color in. One thing we wanna start doing is bringing in this uh, sort of cooler green uh, tone that's just sitting there in the highlights. So we're gonna see if we can get by using our gain. We may need to jump into our log wheels and I'm actually gonna jump to the primaries bars. And let's see here, we wanna pull some red out and maybe pull, this, maybe pull out some blue as well. And that's getting us closer. Let's go ahead and take our gamma. We'll add some red to the gamma. Maybe add some green as well. Let's pull the red back one. Not too bad. And then for our lift, let's continue pulling some of that red out and some of the green. And so now before and after, we're getting there. We're getting a little bit closer now. So now I know I wanna be working under my glow node, um, but because I want to see how that affects everything, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that glow OFX. So we're just gonna go up here and search glow. And drag this on, and then we're going to bring the shine threshold to zero, set our composite type to soft light. And then I usually take the global blend and pull it back to around 0.5. Let's make sure we can see everything. And let's go ahead and bring some of that uh, green tint in. We're gonna do that using the colorize tool uh, built into the Glow OFX. And I'm just gonna pull this right around here. We're gonna select okay. And now let's see what this is doing for us. And I really like the way that's working on the image. Uh, it's really doing a good job of compressing our shadows uh, and opening up our midtones in a way that's really pleasing and uh, also adds a softness to the image as well. So back to our split screen here. And we're gonna keep giving ourselves more room. Okay, now let's start working on our oranges. And so we're just gonna go into the hue versus hue. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna set these anchors for you guys. And then instead of dragging them, I'm just gonna use my, my panel here as well. We're gonna take our yellows and shift them a little bit towards red. And that's gonna start putting some of these, what were more yellow tones, especially this phone right here, if you see this, it's kind of putting them closer to that TVA orange, I guess you could call it. Um, so now it's a little bit too saturated. We're gonna take our hue versus sat tool, hue versus sat curve, and we're gonna pull down the saturation of our reds and yellows. And then jumping into the hue versus luminance, we're gonna kind of do the same thing here, bring down the luminance of our reds and yellows. And let's see how we're doing here. And that is a big change overall. Uh, that's a big element in getting us closer to this look. Uh, matching these oranges is a big, big deal. These are actually still a little bit too saturated, um, but we're not matching you know, two jumpsuits. We're matching 
this letter in the background probably got some haze over it to a jumpsuit. So they don't need to match perfectly. Um, the yellows, you know, these are, if you look at the phone here, I really want to draw your eye to this. Look at the difference in the phone. It was this greenish yellow, and that does not match anything in our reference. And then I do want to check on our skin, just make sure we're, we're not losing anything here. Uh, we're not applying anything that, that affects the skin negatively. And for the most part, I think we're good. Uh, it's pretty desaturated, honestly. But uh, if we wanted to work on the skin separately, we could do that. But I think this is actually kind of true to our reference image here. Like there's not a whole lot of saturation uh, in his skin. And actually what we'll do, I think we'll use, we'll use the, our male, we'll use the father skin as our reference. Just go over into input sizing. And for the input, we wanna pan this left so we can see our dad here. Actually, we didn't need to go that far. We can just go here. And then we'll go to our reference sizing and then pan this right. So there's not a huge difference. Um, if we do want to qualify the skin or just work on it individually, let's actually add, um, well, we'll just add it in here. We'll add a parallel node, so Alt P. And then to qualify the skin, if you look at this node, if we did want to use this node to qualify the skin, um, it's going to be tough for us to do that because if we do Shift H, this is basically the input that this node has. This is the image that this node is, is receiving. So pulling our qualifier, uh, we're going to be pulling a key on this image. There's not enough separation or saturation here to do that. So our trick here is going to be right-clicking in a blank area of the node tree. Let me pull this over a little bit as well. So we're going to right-click and then add source. And then we're going to add a corrector. And we'll do Alt-S to add one more. We're going to connect this new source over into this node. And we're going to keep this pretty simple. We're just going to, we're going to go into our open effects. And we're going to grab a color space transform, dragging this onto our first node on this new source, and then set our input color space to Aria Alexa, input gamma, Aria Log C. And then for our output color space and output gamma, it's going to be Rec 709 on both of them. And so now we have a pretty corrected image. Only other thing I would do is maybe take our offset and try and warm this up slightly. Just get a little more close to balanced. And so now we can use this node to pull a key. I'm just gonna sample a part of his forehead here. And that's gonna do, just add some denoising, blur radius. And again, the reason this is working fairly well is that we're actually pulling this skin key from a corrected image. So we have enough separation and saturation to actually pull that key. So this is looking good now. Uh, what we wanna do is kinda hit play and just make sure we aren't seeing any, you know, just tons of artifacts in the background. We're actually even getting our officer's skin tone there. So that's exactly what we want. It's gonna go back. Key looks pretty good. We're not getting too much of the jumpsuit. So all in all, looking really solid. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this key information and send it to our skin node here. And so now you notice all of this information from our corrected image is being sent to the skin node, but we're taking the actual image information from our primaries and then mixing it with all of these adjustments here. So we're gonna be able to make adjustments specifically to the skin without having to rely on this image signal to pull our key. So this gives us a much cleaner result whenever we're working on skin. So now that we've gone through all of that process just to get our skin qualified, I do wanna pull up the reference here again. I'm just gonna kind of split them 50-50 down the middle. And then in our input sizing, going back to this, I'm gonna pan this over right or left. And then in our reference sizing, I'm gonna pan this a little bit left. And actually we'll zoom in a little bit as well on both of them. Right there is pretty good. So now we will start uh, pushing a little bit of this cooler tone into the highlight of the skin. And then countering that with a little bit of red in the shadows. I'm just gonna kind of bounce this back and forth. Let's see what we're doing here. Small tweak, honestly, but I think we're getting more of that, that natural red in the shadows and the midtones, and then this more neutral tone in the highlights of the skin. So that's a very small change, but it is getting us closer. Now you may or may not want to add that extra step. It does add one more point of failure for a pretty small overall result. Um, but if you did need to use that, that tool, that technique, now you know it, you can just add that to your tool bag. Um, so again, here's our full image. Like I gotta say, it is actually working pretty well on her skin is over here as well. Uh, here's off and on, and if we zoom way in, just kind of looking at the shadows of her skin. They were a little bit more muted here, and then whenever we do that effect, it gives us this greener cast sort of in the highlights, and a little bit more skin tone in the midtones and shadows, and that's exactly what we want. So I would call that a net positive there. Now moving forward in our look adjustment, here I want to hop into our curves, 
And the overall image, as you see here on the parade, is still just a little bit too hot. So we're gonna take our upper mids. Uh, we're gonna make sure our editable splines is unchecked. And we're gonna pull this down. And I wanna pull it down without killing the highlights uh, in our skin tones. That's a great spot to look at the forehead. You wanna kinda of match that overall exposure. Uh, so maybe instead of pulling it from the upper mids, let's try and pull it from the lower mids. That's already given us a better result. So control D, see we're just kind of pulling things down, compressing those shadows, overall giving us a better look. We can actually even take this down further. And then maybe let's take a point here and just add a little bit of contrast this way. And overall, I'm really liking that effect. All right, so now let's go ahead and start shaping some light. As you see here, we kind of have this overall vignette on our subject, uh, subject being Loki. And so we want to recreate that as well on our image. We're going to take a kind of a bottom window and darken up this, this lower region because it's just too bright. And we're also going to sort of add a vignette around our two subjects here. So we're just going to go into the single viewer. Let's give ourselves a little more space to work with. And in our first window tab, we're going to add a circular power window. It's going to be a really wide one because we want to kind of capture both of our subjects here. Going to tilt this a little bit, give it some shape, give it some angle, and then shift H to see what we're selecting. We can actually go even narrower with this. And then just want to go crazy with the softness. All right, so that's going to work. And then we're going to go ahead and invert this window because we want to do a vignette. And that's going to be affecting everything on the outside of it. So now we're going to take a point uh, probably from the lower mids as well and just pull this down even more. And now before and after, really, again, just constantly working on shaping the light. Now, one thing I do notice here, if we look at our reference, we've got a pretty good amount of these tealish upper mids in the background. And so I wanna keep those the best we can. Um, and if you notice on this note here, we're kind of getting rid of that, that space back here in the background. So what I will do is add another circular window. This one's gonna be over here, kind of catching and, and protecting all of this brighter area. And shift H again. And what we're gonna do is we're not gonna invert the actual mask, we're gonna invert the key. And so that's going to protect this image from being affected uh, by the adjustments we're actually making to the exposure. So now if we deselect that highlight and we turn off and on this window, you'll see we're protecting those highlights up here. And now let's go ahead and go into our next window node and now we're gonna kind of shape off the light of this bottom of this frame. And we're going to do that using a gradient window, flip this around and again, shift H. And we wanna make sure that we're feathering this off enough that should be good right around there. And then we're going to pull this down again. We don't want to go too far to where it looks unnatural, but we do want to take the sting off of that. So that's doing a lot better job. We can actually pull this down a little bit, I believe. And that there is going to look good. That's a very natural roll off there in the shadows. So that, that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that there. Then we're going to pull up a reference again to see how things are looking. I think overall, we can probably go into our global adjustments. And we're going to just desaturate things a touch. Just using our saturation knob. I'm going to go too far and then come back up with it. I'm going to jump back into our skin node. And I just want to bring back some of the saturation there. And then with and without our skin node, just turning it off and back on. You see, it really does a whole lot. If we wanted to protect the skin specifically, that's just that's the main advantage of having a skin qualifier. And if you do it right, it's not gonna hurt you. So uh, I do recommend being very careful, especially when you're starting off, pulling a lot of keys, uh, pulling skin qualifiers, because it can really just put you uh, further behind. But when you know how to use them, they can be very helpful. So that's that. Now, last thing I think I wanna do here, other than our grain, is I wanna bring out a little bit more of this, it's sort of a teal, which is really complementary to the orange cast, uh, to the orange tones in our image. So jumping back into our look node, I'm just going to take our gain here. I'm actually going to go into our bars, and we're just going to add a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. And we're just getting that, that region over here a little bit closer to match this. I'm actually going to pull up one more red as well. And then I'll go to a side-by-side. -side. It's looking pretty good. I think the last thing I'll do before the grain is just compress the shadows even more. So we're going to take a point here and just pull down on this point. We're just going to kind of bring these the lower end further down. And then our midtones kind of come back up a little bit. 
So by adding that second point here kind of in the middle, uh, we're just keeping our mids where they were naturally, and then we're just bringing down the shadows, uh, the very low shadows, kind of another way of using the log wheels. And then speaking of, we're gonna go into our look adjustments, and in our log wheels, we're gonna add just a touch of blue here into the shadows. And And I think that's probably gonna finish it off for us. Uh, one thing I'll do is probably just take our low range and pull this down a little bit so it's not grabbing quite as much. But overall, I mean, I really like where that's at. So now I just wanna go ahead and scrub through and see how things are looking before we add our grain. Overall, it's pretty good, but this blue back here in the background is a little bit distracting. It definitely does not fit into our palette. So we're just gonna go into our hue versus sat. We're gonna do this in our global adjustments node. And then we're gonna take our blue and cyan and just kind of bring them down in our saturation. So right there is gonna be good. And that's really only affecting this area because nothing else in our frame is blue. Uh, so we can get by with that adjustment happening there. So now last step, of course, we're gonna add some grain, go to our open effects and just type in grain. And we're going to select a pretty fine uh, grain. We're gonna do 16 millimeter 500T. We want it to be present, but not overpowering. I'm gonna zoom way in so you guys can see this. And it's pretty subtle, but we're gonna take our softness and pull this back just so it's a little bit sharper. And then take our strength and raise it up some. I'm gonna zoom to fit. And if we go full screen here, and we see this full screen, we're gonna play it back. See, everything's holding up very nicely. Our skin tones are beautiful. Our skin tone qualifier has done a great job. And then looking at this frame here, if we pull up our reference again, I mean, exposure's off, but honestly, just the skin tone is absolutely beautiful. Again, it may not be a one-to-one -one match, but if we're going for the low-key look, I think we've done that. And we've got a beautiful image with incredible contrast. Uh, it looks very filmic. I would say part of that is due to the highlight compression and that glow. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. So that's just about it. Let's go ahead and turn off all of our nodes and then go through one by one and see what we have built. So starting off, we're gonna start with ACES. This is our ACES input transform, taking our RE log footage, converting it to ACES. And then our ACES out, which is converting the ACES color space into Rec. 709. Then we did our highlight compression, which is just kind of giving us this slightly more filmic curve to our image. And of course, we're compressing those shadows, bringing them down. We did that pretty naturally by using our editable splines here uh, to bring the overall highlights down, the white point down, and then taper off that effect uh, into our midtone so that we still have natural mids. Next up, we warmed the image up and added a bit of a green tint using our HDR wheels uh, for our primaries. And then we started adding to the look, pushing some colors into our lift gamma gain uh, that we saw in our reference. So we're matching those tones there. And then next up we have our oranges. And this obviously we're bringing down the saturation and the luminance of our oranges. We're also compressing those greener yellows to be more warm. Uh, so you look at the phone here, it's a great example of what it's doing. You can also see that effect in the red of her overalls. So it's really just giving us this more pastel orange. Next up we added our glow and this does a couple of things. One, it gives us this really nice look in the highlights. And if we scroll back to around here, You'll see that effect uh, over in the highlighted areas. And it also does a good job of pushing a little bit more separation and contrast into our shadows, but it does so in just the super soft way that I'm a big fan of. And then we have our look adjustment. And this is where we really started to, to bring the image down in the overall exposure and get it closer to the Loki reference. And then to even further accentuate that, we added some more windows to shape some more light. And we added a bottom window and then our kind of hero frame. Now we would want to go ahead and track these and just make sure they aren't you know, going too high or too low. And for the most part, our characters, our subjects stay in the same part of the frame, so we don't really need to track it. Um, but if they were moving, then of course we would track that. And then of course our lower window, which is just taking the sting off of some of the highlights here in the bottom part of the frame. Then in our global adjustments, we desaturated the whole image, but we do not want to affect our skin. So we added a second source, we corrected the image using a CST, and then we qualified the skin and sent the key information, not the actual visual information, into a parallel node from our previous source. And we brought a little bit of life back into the skin there. And then lastly, we just finished it off with a little bit of grain. And now let's go ahead and check out our final image. All right, that does it for this one. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. This was one I really enjoyed putting together and it is my first look recreation here on the channel. So if you enjoyed this one, please leave a comment down below letting me know what looks you wanna see next. Again, we do have that free ACES training link down below. You can sign up, it's totally free. Highly recommend you check it out, especially if you wanna get a little bit deeper into your knowledge of color managed workflows. So with that, again, thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.